Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Welcome to episode 40. 40. And I still don't have a cake or candles or something sparkling or I don't know. But I wanted to celebrate this. I said to my wife last night, what do we do? 40 episodes, 40 days in a row. It's huge. It's huge for me. And um, But yeah, I guess it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't any uh, chance for us to do anything uh, because I realized these things too late at night, I think. But um, anyway, thank you for being with me and for celebrating this with me today. Uh, I think it's a huge, huge milestone for me personally. You know, having done this for 40 days consecutively, uh, you know, regardless of what was going on and, and things that happened or may not have happened or whatever the case was. And I think we've really had quite an interesting journey over the last 40 episodes. If I look at the very first one where we started and where we are now, uh, I can really see some improvements and I'm already planning like how can we make this better and how can we change it to be interesting and exciting and and all that kind of stuff. We've had some fantastic guests uh, on, the, on the show and I'm going to announce two more guests today. So it's definitely not stopping and uh, we will hopefully go from strength to strength. But to you that watch us every day or watch the recording, thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I deeply appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, I said from the beginning, if I only can reach a few people, you know, that's what everybody says. If I can just change one person's life or just have an impact on one person's life. But you know what? It is That is true, but it's so much more awesome if you can connect with more people. And people, more importantly, that sort of, you know, can sort of get value from what it is that, that we do, but also then be part of a community where you belong and where you can interact with other people that have got some the, the same views and the same outlook on things. I mean, what is better than that? And then doing it virtually, I think, is even more amazing uh, from, from, from that point of view. Let me just take this cable away, yeah, because this thing is now starting to, to bug me. Um, yeah, so what are we talking about today? I mean, sorry for that picture. I hope you can sleep at night after seeing that picture. Um, it is uh, today is all about disaster, you know, and it's not like I'm really going to going to be focusing on information and data in your business from a disaster point of view. So not so much the disaster we're finding ourselves in at the moment or the pandemic, whatever it is that we want to refer this to as. And uh, yeah, but that's what I'm going to get into today. And I'm very excited about it. You know, when I made the decision last night to, to talk about backups was the first sort of thought. And I thought like, you know what, it's about so much more than just how do I back up and why should I back up and that kind of thing. So I really got into it. And uh, I've got some amazing things that I want to share with you today to make you think. And I don't know, you know, maybe you are considering these things or maybe you considered them quite a while back and you haven't revisited it recently. So there's some important things that we need to discuss. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this. So thank you very much for joining us. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let me say good morning to all you beautiful people. Uh, let me just move this thing up a notch here so I can see better. And it looks I can look you more in the eye. Uh, here we go. Well, a lot of people, Terence was in very early this morning, uh, before seven already, Terence was saying terrific Tuesday. And I always call Terence Tobin, Mr. TT. So Mr. TT is Terence Tobin and it's terrific Tuesday, I said to you as well. So welcome, Terence. Thank you very much for, for being here. He says, uh, good vibes. Denise Snell is back. Denise, thank you very much for joining us. I hope it's going well with you. Um, that's uh, good stuff. And then uh, Razan, Razan, welcome. Uh, nice to have you. I look forward to chat to you later. Uh, Malcolm Hendricks, Malcolm, welcome back. Uh, let me just go down here and see. Good morning, everybody. Good morning on a rainy day. Yes, it's been raining now for two days, it feels like, or two evenings. Uh, so, Kobus, definitely. Uh, Kobus, I just want to say that picture of yours with your flag on LinkedIn is absolutely amazing. I think I know you did that a few weeks ago as well, but you used that same picture for, for Freedom Day. I just uh, I love it, you know, with the South African socks. And uh, I think you should start a series with posting where you are, you know, modeling your socks. Because I think that and your and your uh, all, all the different ties that you've got. Anyway, so Casper, good morning, sir. Welcome back. Uh, yes, it's a wonderful day. 
it is really a beautiful day. And, and I'll share with you what it looked like on my stoop this morning in a second. Uh, but yeah, it was quite, uh, I feel like I'm starting to defrost now. Uh, Raymond, good morning. Happy 40th from a very windy and wet south coast. It seems like it's raining all over South Africa, except in Cape Town. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's raining there. If anybody's from here from Cape Town, I haven't seen anyone yet. Let us know. What is it looking like in Cape Town this morning? Uh, Ian, good morning. Welcome back. Nice to have you. I hope it's going well with you and the family. Uh, nice to see you. Renee, good morning. Same to you. Welcome back. Tina, good morning. I want to know how cold it is for the night. But let Raymond Fisser, good morning, Raymond. Welcome. I think it's the second time I've seen you. Welcome. Uh, then Elmin Lotting. Elmin, thank you very much for joining us once more. I uh, really appreciate it. And Bongi as well. Bongi, thank you so much. Uh, I know we've been emailing some things, etc. So great stuff. Thank you very much. And then Conrad Becker. Goedemorgen, Conrad. Welcome back. Uh, nice to have you with us once again. And uh, let me hop on over to my friends on LinkedIn. Johan Vosloo uh, from Berlin. Johan, welcome. <laughs> my friend, sorry, I'm just joking. Um, Johan Vosloo, welcome. Uh, very nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Neil Phillips, good morning. Nice to have you. Here's a celebration cake. Thank you very much. Somebody had to bring the cake. Thank you, Neil. Um, Ronnie Owls, good morning, Ronnie. <laughs> Hope it's going well. Um, I see he's been exercising and doing all sorts of stuff, making me look bad. I need to do something. Uh, Chad, good morning. Uh, thank you for that uh, email yesterday to let me know that uh, there was something missing in the tax tool. Uh, I've got an idea of how that happened. It wasn't like that before I finished it, but I, I think I know what happened. But anyway, so Ihu, uh, good morning, Ihu. Welcome to Stefan Matia, welcome. Peter Strydom, Amanda John, morning from the very nippy but awesome Joba coffee ready. Let's do this. Wishing you all a lovely week ahead. Thank you very much, Amanda. Yes, uh, I've got some tea. I was deliberating whether I should uh, bring some hot chocolate this morning. Uh, maybe I should start doing that. Linda Erasmus, good morning, Linda. Nice to have you with us. Thank you very much. Lovely sunny day in Cape Town, says Yuhu. Yuhu, yeah, is bedarf. Uh, Ronnie Owls, prachtige sonskein dag. Durban is cool and drizzly, says Peter. Beautiful sunshine days in Berlin at the moment. Yes, uh, because it's starting to get summer there, is it? Am I right? It's, yeah, it's starting to get nicer weather there. It should be. I don't know. Um, and then uh, Chad says, pleasure. Great stuff. Nice, nice, nice. So let me show you quickly this morning on my stoop. You know, this is what it's looking at. like. Uh, this was before seven. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I was sitting there and looking at, uh, you know, I always go spend an hour or so there before the show. Uh, to sort of think through things and sometimes I still sit and prepare before the time you know like today today I was I was doing this I only started the content for this at seven this morning uh, because usually I think a lot uh, and when I think too much it takes me long and then once I get it of what it is I want to do then it goes quite quickly but um, yeah you can see it's it's definitely not you can see winter is it's not coming it's yeah <laughs> I think so uh, yeah from from that point definitely uh, an interesting day ahead and interesting days, I think. Um, but yeah, I was built for the cold. I don't know about you, but I'm built for the cold. So I don't know. I can dress myself warmly, but when it's too hot, it's very hard to dress yourself. You know, you'll get arrested if you go too far. Anyways, <laughs> you can see I'm in a very good mood and happy chappy and making jokes. And uh, you're welcome, guys. Please uh, remember in the in the chats to please interact with one another. I'll, I'll always invite you to, to do that. Please, you're more than welcome. Please give us your insights, and if you want to share resources and things like that, you're more than welcome. Please remember to give us some love. You know what? Like the videos, share the videos, You know, tell others about it. Please help us get the word out there. Uh, this is really awesome. We're recording this always. So even if somebody can't watch live, because a lot of people are telling me, listen, I've got a meeting on at 8 in the morning, a check-in or a whatever. And that's great. You can come and watch the recording afterwards. It's available immediately on both YouTube and on uh, LinkedIn. The YouTube one takes almost 12 hours to render the HD version of it so that it's in, in HD, but you can have the 480p sort of version immediately. Never had an issue with that. And then obviously on LinkedIn as well. Sometimes like with uh, when Ryan Stramroot was on the show uh, with Ryan's one, we had some technical difficulties. So those things I edited out afterwards, but it took about a day, 24 hours before it was all edited out and everything was there because it takes some time for, for YouTube to re-render that, for example. And the one on LinkedIn, I can't edit. I can only edit the end and, and the start and end points of the, of the video. 
So, um, yeah, but those kind of things. So we do try, like, if there's things like that, to take that out. So if you do rewatch the recording, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. I do leave all the comments and the hellos and all of that in there. Uh, at this point in time, I don't edit that out. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the recordings are available. It's for anyone to watch. And if you're getting any value from this, please, you know, remember to subscribe on YouTube. I saw that yesterday we got five new subscribers. Thank you very much for everybody that, that did subscribe on the channel. And then also on LinkedIn, thank you very much uh, for all the connection, the requests, and, and people that are connecting. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, and you're more than welcome to do that. If you feel that, that we're providing any kind of value uh, that you can use, uh, then please please do consider to, to, to subscribe or connect with me. All righty. Cool beans. Then just lastly, uh, just again, the tax tool that we launched yesterday, uh, the latest version. You can go get I see there was quite a few people who got the... Uh, the trial version of that and then they already had quite a number of people renew so thank you very much for that i know times are tough at the moment you know and i think it goes to show the value of this tool when people are willing to immediately upgrade and immediately get the latest one because they've been using it for the last three or four years and they know what it does so thank you very very much for everyone that has done that i really really appreciate it um it means a lot so yeah oh there we go emotions on 40. okay Anyway, so let me announce quickly um, my one guest, uh, the guest for tomorrow I'll announce at the end. But uh, there's another guest. I've spoken to them yesterday. I'm waiting for uh, for feedback on when exactly it will be, if it will be this week or early next week. I'm not sure. Um, I'm waiting for them to get back to me. But I can tell you, uh, you know, I've spoken a lot about the different areas of a business where we speak about um, – what do you call it? Uh, like you need to create value. You got to market it. You got to sell it. You got to deliver the value. And then that fifth area is about financial management. And I'm going to have people on the show who knows their stuff around financial management. And we're going to talk a lot about obviously how do we manage commissions? How do we look at it? Why is it important? Why does it not matter whether you are a one man business or you have several advisors working for you or you have a national team of people working for you? We're going to get into all of that. And some very interesting stats and things from from there. I'll give you more information as soon as I know. Uh, but uh, very very excited about that one. Uh, so I'll announce that hopefully then tomorrow. I hope. Um, so let's see. That's a yeah. Just like because they're on the show. So so please let me know. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think from from that point that that's important. And then I'll announce my guest for tomorrow uh, closer to the end of the show to make sure that uh, you stick around and. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be going to be interesting. Good morning, Neil Strydom. Welcome terug daan. Kroon Stadse Wereld, denk ek. Um, so, welcome terug. I appreciate it. And uh, with that, let's get into, into today's show. All righty. So, here we go. All right. So, when we talk about... Uh, good morning, Surieta. Sorry, Surieta, over on LinkedIn. Nice to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so, talking about disaster... Let me switch off that little thing there at the bottom. You know, whoopsie, that is the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so there is something that I messed up on. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to show you the, the actual things. Let me just mention this to you. I never updated the system to show you the quest or the, the topics that I'm going to talk about. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the first thing I want to talk about is information and data. Uh, the different types of information and data that we sit with, the different types of information and data that we work with. Uh, you know, and the things that we need to think about this, because I, I don't know if we always think about all of these different things that we actually have under our control and that we have a responsibility towards. So that is that is an, an important thing. Um, so first off is obviously personal information, you know, so personal information, like obviously ID numbers, names, surnames, addresses, banking details, um, you know, what did I say, addresses. But all of the personal information that we need in order to do planning for a client, in order to communicate with a client. So we've got email addresses, telephone numbers, you know, all that kind of stuff we've got. And often we've got documents and things that will sort of prove that information. So that is all the kind of information that we sit with. And this is not only in a financial planning sense. You know, if you're an accountant or a tax practitioner or you own a business and you work with client information, you're going to have this the first thing you always ask is like name, surname, telephone number, email address. Those are the, the, the least amount of things that you'll have. And if you are in, in things like financial services, you'll definitely ask for ID numbers and things because you need ages. You, you, you need all sorts of stuff, you know. And uh, usually you try and 
and get all the information that you need so that whenever you need to fill in whatever kind of form or whatever transaction you're ending into, you already have the information. Doctors, you know, I mean, just think about all of the information that that you sit with if you're a doctor. Uh, so those things are, are really, really sensitive information sometimes, but it is there. I mean, we've got copies of IDs. Uh, usually when you go to a doctor or you come to a financial planner, you go to most businesses, you know, they ask, I mean, think about when you go to somewhere like Cash Crusaders, they, if you go and sell something to them or you, you, whatever you transaction you do there, they want a copy of your ID. So where does that go? What do they do with that? Okay, so that's the first thing. Financial information is the other thing. So in our case, we and, and accountants and tax people, we often sit with a lot of financial information from clients. So we sit with your income and expenses, sometimes just your income, but with us, income and expenses, assets and liabilities, uh, you know, trust information, financials, business information. It's crazy the kind of things that that we have, you know, and and um, I'm going to ask you a very important question right after this with uh, with regards to all of this. Then also we sit with transaction histories, uh, you know, everything that has been done, everything that has been discussed. So meet, notes of meetings, uh, you know, discussions that we had with clients, things that were shared with us in those meetings, but everything that was done. So we keep a record, hopefully you keep a record of when you changed anything to a policy, you implemented a new policy, you, you know, uh, you know, sort of you issued letters to the client, you helped them change beneficiaries, you, whatever thing you did, there must be a transaction history to show that that was the request from the client. We acted timelessly, it was implemented, we confirmed back to the client. So there's this whole process around, you know, the information that, that needs to be there to prove the transaction that you have. And uh, very important. So documents and templates, you know, you have hopefully created some templates over the years, or you maybe have done it recently, doesn't matter. But you sit with all these templates that you've created, then a whole host of documents, you know, be it informational documents or books or whatever it, it, it is that you've got. But there are, there's some information there that is that is based on, on, on that. And it's things that we use in our business to make our business run smoother and, and more effectively. Then also, if you've documented, and I hope you have, uh, you have to document your systems and your processes, your workflows. All of that stuff needs to be documented. And you know, a lot of people just do. And when somebody new starts, we show them step by step. But are those things documented? Could you have given them a document and say, well, these are the things that you need to know. And if you want to do anything, you just go and refer to this and it'll take you through step by step. You know, um, because that's your way of doing it. So those things are, are documented. That's information that resides somewhere. Uh, and I'll get to that in a moment. Where does all this information sit? Where does all of this information uh, reside? Then your business plans, action plans, strategies, you know, hopefully those are also documented. But where are those? Well, those are things that we need to think about. You know, often when we think about data and information, we only think about clients and client information. But what about all the other stuff that you use in your business? And that is really crucial to, to your business. Your marketing material. What happens to that? You know, where is it? Do you have just a lot of paper flyers and folders and things like that? Or is everything electronically and where is it? You know, so those kind of things we need to think about. And then and then something more personal is sentimental, inform uh, sentimental information, if you will, or rather sentimental, I don't know, files and things particularly. And, and, and you know, when we spoke to Ryan the other day, about his ordeal where he got, uh, he was part of an armed robbery while he was a victim to one. He wasn't part of it. He was a victim to to that. And uh, they stole his laptops, his external hard drives with so many, so much footage and photos and things about uh, extreme adventure swimming, it, things that he went on. And those things are now forever gone. So those are the kind of things that I'm talking about, sentimental things, things that you captured that you can't replace. You know, if you lose your marketing material, you can create new ones. If you lose documents and templates, you can create new ones. You're going to lose a lot of time doing that, but that can be replaced. But often these sentimental things that we've got cannot be replaced. So let's move away from the personal side. Let's look in your business. I mean, all the client events, you know, team things that you did, uh, you know, how your offices maybe evolved over the years, Whatever, maybe you've got images and videos and all sorts of things, articles where you were published in, in something, you know, or photos where you did your first radio interview or anything like that. 
those things are important because it tells the story of your business. And do we think about, well, what happens to those things? I promise you, you know, when you're going to talk about it or when you're going to think about it is the day that you lose it. Um, and, and that's important. So that's the kind of information and data sort of that I'm talking about and that I want to, want to look at uh, going, going forward. So my second question here then would be, I mean, I can just do this. So my second question would be, uh, where is this uh, information? Where is this information? So let me just do that. You see, that's how, how great this is. Uh, where is this information? Well, in my experience, working with advisors now since 1998, literally, okay, and things have evolved quite significantly since then. It's not the same things that are available. It's not We don't work in the same way. And particularly now that you can't go to the office. You know, this is quite an interesting time to say, whoa, so did I have access or did I take the files from my office and bring them home with me? Am I sitting with some files? Is Sunet sitting with some files? Is Karen sitting with some files? Is Jono sitting with some files? I don't know. You know, where's all this information at the moment? Um, and typically, we have information in files because that's how we used to work. If you've been in this game for a long time, we still work with files. You still like to take something to the client if you go and see the client. But physical files and folders. And it's not only in terms of client information, it's your systems and processes. Maybe all of those things are documented, printed out, put into a file, and it's somewhere in a cabinet or somewhere where you where you where you have it, where you where you're keeping it safe, hopefully. Then also you can have if you are more than one person in a in a in a practice, chances are you're gonna have more than one computer. So what then typically happens is that the information on each computer is different. You don't have an exact copy of all the information on all the all the machines. So you may have information that are scattered across devices. And on that note, I mean, there could be information on your phone. A lot of people are using scanning apps, you know, to let me, oh, no, it's easy. Let me scan your ID. Boom. And now that person's ID is sitting on your phone. And now what? So you email it, you WhatsApp it, whatever, to your office. And then what? It's still on your phone. Um, so I'm not even talking about from a risk point of view. So from... If I talk about disaster recovery and backups and what we need to do to protect the information, I'm not going to look at all the stuff in terms of, you know, those kind of things and Poppy and GDPR and, and all these lovely legislations that we have. You want to I just want to focus on some of the things that we need to start thinking about, you know, if it's on different, different devices, okay, so different computers, different, what about phones, tablets, you know, things are scattered. And the problem is that the copy on those things are not all the same. Different things reside in different places because it depends on the device you used at the time when you obtained the information quite often. So those are very important. Some people obviously have a server in their in their office, and uh, which is a good idea. I like that because a server means that everything resides centrally and the other machines have got access to that, but all the information actually resides. So even if the information on each computer is different, the main sort of information or or where everything comes together is on the server. So although you may have a local copy on your machine or on your phone or wherever, that document actually sits on the server in the office. So that is already sort of a better step in, in that direction. But, I mean, I'm going to look at what are the things that can go wrong in a second. And, uh, you know, then we, then we also need to, to decide, you know, are these things really good, all these options that we've got um, from, from, from that point. All right, so uh, then the other thing is also maybe some of the information or hopefully all of the information actually resides in your CRM, your, your client relationship management software. Whatever system you're using, whether it's a standalone thing or it's an all-in-one kind of system, um, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It is, uh, you need to consider uploading this there because one, the information then is linked to the specific client to whom it relates you have space on there to have things that only relates to your business and that's got nothing to do with clients. It is behind a login, so it is a lot safer in that way. And often the CRM businesses will create backups for you of their data. Not to say they will, and we'll talk about that, but they, they may very well uh, do that for you. So that would mean that that's actually not a bad idea. If you are using your CRM to store information and documents and all the kinds of information that I spoke about, and that's already a big step in the right direction. All right, and then lastly, uh, sort of is things using like cloud storage. And cloud storage is not a fail safe. Cloud storage is nice. Remember, with cloud storage, I'm talking about Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, iCloud, Box. I don't know what else there is, but 
um, all these kind of sort of services where you can put your files onto cloud storage. And that's what it is. It is storage. And the whole purpose behind these tools is that it's only meant to sync documents to different machines. So already, if you wanted to have an exact copy on all the machines that you want access to that information, that is an option. But it is not a fail safe. Often, if you go into the terms and conditions for these things, they say, we don't make backups. So you got to make sure, do they make backups? And if they don't, is it an option that you can switch it on? Because, I mean, in my mind, for very long, I thought like, okay, all my stuff is on OneDrive. So if somebody steals my computer, I mean, wow, amazing. Go buy a new one, come, boom, download. There's all your documents back. So not, not such a big problem, but it is not really meant to do to do um, backups. And I'll, I'll share with you a little bit why that is a little bit later. Because if you really look at doing backups and making sure that your data is safe, there's a process and there's certain things that you need to consider in terms of that, and I'll get to that, uh, you know, as we as we move through. Alrighty, so what can go wrong then? Uh, obviously, and it was amazing how quickly these things just fell out of my head when I was thinking like, oh, so what can go wrong? And you often start off with things that are that have happened to yourself, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, first of all, the the one thing that. I think has happened to many people, or if, if it hasn't happened to you, I can promise you, you know someone that it has happened to, and that is your hard drive crashed. Okay, your hard drive crashed. <laughs> it's like working, and then there's just nothing. You know, or even worse, you have your laptop that you're working on, and as you stand up, you bump it. Maybe you sat on a chair and you were busy working, you know, on a lounge suite or something and working, and when you stand up, you bump it and it falls, and there goes the hard drive because the hard drive you know, not, I'm not talking about solid state drives, but your typical hard drive has got moving parts. It's mechanical. So if it's working and it falls and it then bends and then it breaks, it literally breaks. And, um, you know, and there are things that they can do to recover that, but it costs a lot of money and it's not always successful. So, yeah, it's um, one of those things is where your hard drive crash, not not a nice feeling and not a nice thing uh, to, to experience. And uh, then secondly is data corruption, where for some weird reason, a file work today, tomorrow you open it, it doesn't want to open and it's corrupted. And I can't tell you why that happens. I don't know. Maybe sometimes it's in the saving process, something goes wrong, you know, or something, sometimes something changes in a program and then it doesn't want to open the old files anymore. But then, what do you do then? So that's, it's, that is the most frustrating thing. Like last night I was opening Excel, it's giving me an error, doesn't want to open. It's saying that this thing is causing an error and it didn't cause an error the day before. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> you know, so luckily I could disable that, but you can't always do that. So what do you do when 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 things really go go wrong in that sense? Then obviously, I mean, you've lost a phone, your phone has been stolen, they like chances are very high of that. Uh maybe say they've broken into your offices, stolen computers, you know, your laptop has gotten stolen, uh, or you just lose things, you know, you just Simple like phones and tablets, you put it down somewhere and then you left and then you come back, you know, because you've got that, you, you put it down there and then when you come back, it's just gone. So those kind of things are really, really like shattering, you know, it's it, it, it can break me <laughs> when things like that happen. So very important then to, to sort of like, okay, but what happens? And the things I want you to start thinking about is like, okay, if this were to happen to me in my business, what would the situation be? What will happen to the information that I've got? Will I be able to recover it? Will, I, will it be safe? Uh, you know, will it be quick and easy to get back? You know, maybe I lose a day instead of weeks or months. I don't know. Uh, but those are the kind of things I want you to start thinking about specifically in your business around how do we do this. Uh, and, and going through this, I realized one big thing is that I've been, been way too comfortable using things like OneDrive, et cetera, to be able to have all my documents on there, everything, even all the videos for this is all on there. You know, so it feels like, oh, it's there and it's safe. And we spoke about this the other day using cloud storage, you know, but it's, is it a fail safe? That's the question. So we need to talk about that. Then uh, what if things get destroyed? <laughs> oh, and there's so many ways that that can happen, right? Um, so if I say destroyed, maybe there's a fire, you know, maybe, I don't know, there's, a, you know, things like power surges and power failures and things like that can also destroy the hardware that you're working on and the hard drives that you've got. So there's many ways that this can happen. You know, often we, I think often we will sit 
And we'll think like, oh, that'll never happen to me because we live in a very small town somewhere in the corner of South Africa and nothing ever happens here. You know, we're lucky that the sun goes down and come up because otherwise nothing else would have happened. Uh, but we can't think like that. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to you just in a second. What are the two most, according to research, what is the two most or, or the two biggest contributors to the loss of data in business? It's quite interesting uh, to, to think about that because all these things we talk about is really like, yeah, it's cool. Okay. I understand. Yes, it is a risk, but the chances of it happening is very, very slim in, in our opinion until it happens. But anyway, the next one is ransomware. And I spoke about that in the cybersecurity, cyber risk uh, episode. I can't remember which episode that was, uh, but it was one of the earlier ones. And uh, you can go check that out as well, where I spoke about that and all the things that we need to consider uh, in, in our businesses in terms of that. But ransomware is, is real, guys. Uh, it's it's real. I see the number of, and I'm going to do this, this session on scams as well, uh, probably later this week, where... You know, I see how many, like yesterday, let me let me read this to you. This is awesome. It's amazing. It says here, oh, where is it now? Contact your payout agent for your COVID-19 relief cash, email relief funds at whatever. You get, I, mean, I don't even know where the hell they get my, my phone number to send me an SMS, but it's probably because it's somewhere on the internet. Um. So those kind of things are happening, and and we got to know that ransomware hacking, those things are real, and they are targeting smaller and smaller businesses, and not the big ones anymore, because the big ones have got great security. It's much easier to to sort of target somebody who doesn't expect to be targeted. This is going to come after me. I'm a small fry. That's what they're doing. Okay, and I think I gave stats uh, the other day about just how much that is uh, in fact happening. Um, then viruses and malware as well can cause you to lose if, you, if there's no other way to get rid of that virus or that malware on your on your computer you have to wipe everything and when they've already infected all your files then you're screwed sorry for the plain english there that's free state english for you then you have a problem okay so <laughs> i think that that's important uh, and then also what about things like accidental loss you know when you talk about like oops i deleted that file by mistake Ish, i pressed the wrong button it's happened to me like a few times you know, um, my wife has spilled coffee, not coffee, actually a Savannah light, if I remember correctly, over her laptop. Yeah, it was the stickiest thing ever. Couldn't get it right. So at least you don't necessarily lose data in that way. But what if you did spill something on your computer and shorted the motherboard and it caused an issue in the in the hard drive? It wasn't only just a keyboard issue. A lot of times, the or a lot of the new laptops have got like spill proof keyboards now that even if you do spill it it won't get to the electronics you know but still it's not to say that you've got that uh, but what if something like that happens so those things are real and some of these things are have got a bigger chance of of happening especially now that you're working from home while you're busy having a bra and a beer and you're doing some work chances of that happening is, is a lot 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 higher so to get to my point about research and you know what are the two biggest sort of reasons for people or, or for data loss in business okay specifically but also i think from our, our personal point of view is hardware failure so the machine that you're using fails okay and don't think because you've got an external hard drive or a thumb drive or a, what you call these things like a flash drive or you know a stocky that you've got that that now you're safe no you're not safe okay those things although they can't mechanically fail you can lose them easily very very easily and i've lost i don't know if I must think about the number of thumb drives that I've had and how many I, I can find, you know, it's it's scary. Uh, so those things are important. And then secondly is human error. It's because of human error. You deleted something or, you know, you didn't do something or you did do something, but it's human error. So it's either the machine that we're using or it's the person using the machine that's causing the issue. And I think that is that should also be, be eye-opening. Um, so then the question becomes, how can you protect your business right um so how can you protect your business well there's quite a few things that that one could do uh, and i'm going to go into each one of them i just want to mention them first off you know as we're going along uh, but first of all is look at proper processes and workflows in your business because as i said if it's human error it may be the process we go through the things that we do or that we don't do so you want to 
the way to minimize human error is by implementing good processes and workflows, particularly when it now comes to your data. Because often we think about oh, how do we do our job every day, but what about the process and the workflow to keep our data safe? So that also that is also needs to be considered. You need to have the right virus, malware, and endpoint protection software, um, you know, and depending on your business, there are different things. So I'll talk a little bit about that, but you definitely need that. And then you need to perform backups. Uh, the, the safest way to go about this, because even if you do all of the things, there's always this chance that something may still go wrong. So to perform backups is definitely, uh, you know, one of the one of the biggest things that, that, you, uh, that you could do. All right. So... So let's talk about processes uh, and, and what are the things that we need to consider when we when we think about that and we want to implement that. And what are the things that I'm thinking about? It, it's, it can be very irritating, actually, uh, but it has saved me, literally, <laughs> you know, a few times. But that is to have, uh, an, if, if the software that you're using or, you know, wherever you work in, if that has got an auto-save function, so that it auto saves either every so many minutes or every time you make a change. Like if you look at Office 365 at the moment, it's have an, it has an auto save function. That auto save function only works if you save the files to OneDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud storage, when you save it there. But every time you do something, you'll see, boom, saving, saving, saving. And every time what it's doing is it's creating a different version of that file. So you even if you make a mistake here, you can go back to previous ones. So even if you delete everything off the screen right now, and it saves it like that. Previously, if you hit delete and you sort of saved and it was gone, you couldn't get it back. Because remember, that undo function doesn't work once you've saved. Now, in recent times, I see that you could still undo if you save. But if you close that file and you come back, then you can't undo. So what you, but with this auto save and version history sort of that you can do is to say, well, oh, now I've got a blank file, but let's just go to the version before this and boom, all your stuff is back. So there are things like that that one would need to consider. So look at the software that you use most in your day that deals where you can we are creating information and data and things like that. That doesn't have an autosave function and doesn't have built-in version history. When we spoke about the cloud storage things, we also spoke there about like Dropbox and OneDrive creates these version creates these versions, uh, you know, that you can go back on. But it is great if it happens inside the software that you are that you are in fact using. So those are some of the things that, that you need to, to consider. Then obviously another thing is to say, well, let's instead of having all of this data across different devices, let's have a central storage unit for that. And there's many things that you can do in terms of that because that could be cloud-based, it could be server-based, you know, all kinds of things. And, and a lot of times people will say, but, you know, if I have a server and I'm not at the office, how do I access my data? Well, you can access your server from anywhere and you can use a VPN to do that, to virtual private network, to do that securely, you know, and that to make sure that uh, it can't be seen by other people or it can't be accessed by other people on the internet. So there are ways to definitely set it up and you can access that server just like any other server on the internet. You can access that server from anywhere in the world. It's got its own address, everything, but you've got to make sure that it's set up properly. You've got the right um, firewall software and endpoint protections and whatever needs to be on that server to protect that information because remember now everything is in that one it's not distributed across different things the main data is sitting there but it is definitely possible to to do that and even in a, on a smaller scale it's also possible to do that uh, and i'll get to that in a second when i talk about uh, performing backups uh, what are some of the solutions i'm not going to get into too much of the solution side uh, i'm just going to tell you the different things that are out there and then one could consider what would work best for you and your business and obviously what's best for your budget because these things don't come free. Uh, you know, anything where if I back up anything that is of importance and I don't pay for it, I'll be very, very concerned about that. All right, then, um, yeah, and then obviously to build in backups as part of your process and, and how you do it. So I'll get to backups uh, at the end and talk about that. But I think those are very, very important uh, from that point. Let me see quickly. Uh, Kevin, good morning, Kevin. Welcome. Nice to have you back. Homozo, same. Thank you for being back. And Kuketsu as well. Thank you very much for being back. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, let me hop on over here to, to uh, pressing the wrong button there. Uh, let me go back to, to LinkedIn. I was off LinkedIn now for a second there. Um, let me see. 
problem. Uh, Johan, Excel is an excellent calculation tool, but a terrible database. Ugh, you can please repeat that another hundred times. <laughs> so that's also something. I think one of the things that we can get into into a future episode is really talking about uh, the uh, talking about Excel and sort of Excel tips and tricks. I've got a few few topics that I've put down where I want to say, you know, the best seven of this and the best seven of that and the best seven of which one is Excel tips and tricks. So you must let me know whether you would be interested in that. Uh, to sort of see uh, what's happening there. We just quickly see. Um, I don't see any other comments here. So sorry for that. Um, All righty. So then very important is that you need to have the right antivirus, malware, and end protection software, uh, endpoint protection. All right, so there you go. The right antivirus, malware, and endpoint protection. That is crucial. I'm so happy that I had typing in standard seven, you know, old grade nine, well, the new grade nine, old standard seven. Uh, so <laughs> luckily I can I can type correctly uh, when I need to. But this is very, very important. I think this is also an area that we neglect quite a lot. And, uh, you know, in, my, in the cybersecurity thing, I focused a lot more on these kind of things, what are the kind of threats and things that we deal with and that we're exposing our businesses and our personal lives to. So definitely go check that, that episode out. But, you know, having the right, because there's so many things that people have done and of, often they are free and often they are, you know, like they, they're well known, but they slow down your computer and it feels like, oh, everything is so slow, but at least I'm safe, but it's so slow, you know. And there are big names out there that are that are causing these kind of challenges, particularly on, on personal computers and that. And so for me, you know, having the right one is absolutely crucial. And to understand, you know, this is like medical aid. You won't, don't want to be on the biggest medical aid plan unless you have to be on it. It's, you know, often, and I've spoken about this before as well, where you say, well, you know, why are you on this comprehensive plan? And they would go like, no, just in case. Okay, but is this, do you use this? Do you go, no, no, no. So do you understand that you're paying two to three thousand rand a month more for something that you're not using? Yeah, but in case. So for some people, that is the ultimate. But also, you know, you can if you really think about it, get what you need in terms of that. So the same with your antivirus. Be very clear on what your situation is and where your needs are, and then what kind of sort of solution will work best for you. And that is the beauty about these things, is that there are different solutions for different sizes of businesses, for different kind of things that you want to protect. So you don't have to get just the latest and greatest one just for the sake of getting it. So those are extremely important. Uh, but here we're looking specifically at endpoint protection. So endpoint protection really refers to just in plain plain language, and I'm, I might not explain this 100% correctly, but endpoint uh, pr protection or endpoints are every single device in your network. That is an endpoint. So you may have a server, and then there is something that will connect to that server, you know, or it will connect to your network. So you'll have the router, let's say, as well as the center maybe of your network. And then everything that attaches to that router and that is part of the network that can see one another, each one of those devices uh, is or an endpoint. Okay. So very important that we are able to protect each one of those because if something gets in at one of those endpoints, the entire network is at risk and the entire network is exposed because it will spread like that. Definitely. I've seen that. I've told you the story about what happened to me. I had the software that I thought was great, very well known. It's part of Google's suite of things. And eventually when I picked up that I had these viruses, we picked up the same viruses on all the computers in our home. And uh, it's because of the network. So it just distributes itself and it happens very, very quickly. So you have to be very careful about that. So any devices, if you allow your staff to connect to your network, uh, if they're now still going to go to the office, if they connect to your network with their phones because they want to whatever. You need to set them up as guests because at least if you have a guest account, they can still have access to the internet, but they can't access, you know, your business side of the network. So there are things like that that you could do in order to protect yourself. But endpoint protection is critical. You want something that's there as a barrier, you know, the proverbial mask for your network so that you don't get infected. So that's important. Then file server protection as well. Got to make sure that that file there, that vault there where everything resides, that that thing is as tight and secure as possible because that is now the one place where everything is residing. So that is critical. You do got to have that in place. Then also another big, big thing when it comes to, to this is encryption. You, there's a, quite a number of things. And what encryption is, it's just where 
if something is on your machine, before it gets sent or goes out of your machine, it gets encrypted. It gets scrambled. It, it's, it's the Macar. You know, it's almost like, what is a good example for this? Um, I mean, if you have a picture there, okay, and it's made of mosaic tiles, what it does is it's it's just breaking it back up and putting all the little tiles, the Macar, you know, all mixed up in that so that you can't see what the hell this was. And then, you know, only you have the the sort of key to, to that on your machine in order to unlock the picture so that it automatically assembles itself again and it shows you the perfect picture. So that's basically what encryption does. And often, you know, you can do it on your machine so that whenever something goes off your machine, it's not on your machine, it is scrambled, that nobody can see what it is. So that is something that you want to consider. I see more and more corporates are doing this where people can't do nothing almost on their laptop except their work. And they can't even transfer it from here to another device or anything like that. Which sometimes can be a problem because if you if you designed a slideshow and you want to use that slideshow via your tablet, you know, then it's a problem to get it there. But be that as it may, you've got control over how much you want to restrict that. Often also where encryption comes in is before things are sent to another person. So emails, you got to make sure that your emails are no longer using the normal port 25 and I can't remember the other one. But the normal SMTP and pop port, so that it's just normal sending. There's no security. You've got to make sure that you're using the encrypted ones so that when I send an email, it's encrypted. And only when the intended recipient receives it does it unscramble and they can see it. And those things happen seamlessly. Don't worry. You don't have to be a geek or a nerd or a, some IT guru. It just those things happen automatically. But these are all things that we can build in to make sure that everything is as secure as possible and as safe as possible from that point of view. And all of this can be done by your, if you've got the right software. Then something like, it's something that has happened, you know, and often it is a pain in the butt, uh, but it is it does work very well is to have two-factor authentication. So that's definitely something to consider as well. If somebody wants to log in, they, they need to put in a one-time PIN or, you know, a code or something like that. So they've got to double. There's, there's two gates they've got to get through before they get into the system. So that is obviously a good idea to have as well. And then what you want the software to be is to be light, easy to deploy. Uh, and if I say light, I mean, you mustn't even know that it's there. Okay, it must just do its thing. There must be a pop-up to say, hey, we blocked this. Fantastic. I forgot you were there. You were so quiet and so light. I didn't even know that you were there. Um, and then you've got to be able to manage it remotely if you've got people working for you. If it's just you, uh, you know, everything is contained, you maybe don't, don't need that. But if you've got somebody that, you know, they, they brought their devices and they do things there and or whatever, and they leave your business or your employing, you know, they're no longer employed by you or whatever, you want to be able to switch those things off or to, to delete things remotely, whatever that belongs to your business. And you want to be able to do that and manage all these things remotely uh, as well. That is definitely an option and an add-on that you would want to think about. But those are the kind of things that you definitely need to consider. And um, from, from this point of view, the protection that I have been advising now for the last while is ESET, uh, E-S-E-T. Uh, I'm a partner of ESETs as well. We use it in our business. We've been using it for a year. And then I decided I want to become a partner of these because the, it, the product works beautifully. Uh, it, it has protected me so many times of things that I never even knew. Uh, includes includes email, um, you know, your files when you're on other networks. It's amazing what it does. And I don't even know that it's there. So ESET is absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's a couple of you that have already purchased it through me. Thank you for that. But um, if you are looking to, to talk more about those kind of things, you can get in contact. Uh, and if you just want to explore what the options are, but um, but ESET is definitely one to look at. Uh, and then otherwise, there are other ones as well out there that you can have a look at. I don't know how they work or, or that. All I know is the ones that I used before was an issue. And I'm quite happy with ESET uh, at this point in time. So uh, that is definitely what, one thing to, to look into. All right. So then finally, we get to number seven, which is performing the backups. And what is the process for performing backups, uh, you know, what what are the kind of options that you've got? And from that point, it's really, really interesting when you look at this. And and there was a point when uh, I used some of the stuff, uh, you know, but in, uh, some of them at that point got got expensive. I see there's, there's so many more, uh, you know, cost-friendly sort of options available. And it'll be quite nice to hear, you know, if you are using some of the solutions, you know, uh, you know, what are you using and how you experience it? Is it working for you or not? But when I talk about performing backups, there's this thing called the 3-2-1 rule. So 3-2-1, uh, 
rule. And it goes like this. So you need to have three copies of your data, of your information. There needs to be three copies, okay? You need two locally and one off-site. So there's three copies of data, two of which is local. In other words, it's within your control, and one is off-site. So it's not on in your control. It's, it's somewhere, it resides somewhere else. So typically how this looks or how this works is to say, well, the first copy is your original data. So it's the data that you've got on your machine and that you're working with, it's on your server, uh, et cetera. So those are the, 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 the number one or the first copy. The second copy would typically be an external hard drive or something like that where you, you make a backup to that device. Um, some of these things can be automated. Uh, the problem is that what you want to do is actually you know, yeah, you want to have a second copy there, and that's fine. So those ones can be automated. And some people use multiple external hard drive disks where they, they take one home with them. And that's the off-site copy. The other way to do an off-site copy would also then be to have it stored in the cloud or have a cloud backup service that does that. I think what is important with these backups, because the problem is the first time you're going to back up your, your system, your network, your machines, your server, it takes it takes a long time if there's a lot of data on it. But then if it's a real backup solution that you've got, instead of making a copy and saying, well, copy this to that or using Windows as backup things, et cetera, there are solutions out there that does what is called incremental backups. And that is what was so beautiful to me. So the first backup was huge, particularly if you use cloud storage, because at that point, one, uploading stuff was a it was killing me because it was a 4 meg ADSL line with a 500 kilobits per second upstream, which means it's standing still when it's moving. Um, so that took forever. Now with five, I think it'll be a lot better. But um, so that was the one issue. The other thing is at that point we had like capped data, so you didn't you didn't have uncapped. And um, the other thing now is that what they do with incremental backups is it only it, if the first backup is the full backup, and after that it only adds what has changed. So suddenly those backups go a lot quicker. The backups are a lot smaller in terms of that. So it works a lot better from that point of view. And, and as I say, as fiber is becoming more a thing, you know, particularly for businesses, more and more businesses are getting fiber, you know, these solutions become so much more feasible and it becomes so much more like it's a no-brainer. I've got to use this. And the difference between this and – but, for instance, I'm putting all my stuff is in OneDrive or on Google Drive or wherever you're putting it. Yes, but here's the thing. Is that data that's sitting there encrypted? So if somebody was able to – access that those files is it encrypted in other words will they not be able to see what is there they may see that there's files but they can't see what it is is that happening because that is what a true backup should be is that you've got to have this copy of your files but it also needs to be encrypted so that it's safe because people can still steal that data even though you've got that backup okay so i'm getting very excited now <laughs> for some reason um, but yeah, that's definitely one of the things you want to see how much you can automate your backups because I've seen so many people, we've got to do backups. So it's usually what happens is they lose their data and then they go like, I'm going to, I'm going to now back up religiously, you know, because this has hurt us and blah, blah, blah. And they do it for a week or for a month and then they stop doing the, the backups. And often the business owner is the one who does the backups because they feel that they need to be in charge and they need to be in control and then they stop doing it. And then, Yeah. When you lose data, you say, oh, my last backup was three months ago, and you lose three months' worth of, of information. So you want to automate this as much as possible. And you can do this through cloud backup solutions uh, where you know it's, a, it's something that you install on your computer. You set it up, the preferences, what must be backed up, when must it be backed up. So you can set it to run in the evenings when you're not there. You can even, once it's done, let it shut off your computers for you. You can do all sorts of stuff like that, you know, which is quite amazing. But then you know you always have that backup. You know, and there are people like they will keep those backups. Uh, apart from having your your the, the three to one method, there's also a rotation that you can do in order to say, well, I'm going to back up for every single day, and then I'm going to keep so that's a week, and then I'm going to keep four weeks worth of data, and then I'm going to keep three months worth of data, and then you know, so there's always something to go back to. It's not only one single backup. Uh, so, so that gets a bit complicated, but but anyway, but that's sort of how you how many of those backups because then each backup is a backup on its own, and how many of them are you keeping, and in what what sort of rotation? As as I said, the other thing that you could use, particularly if you've got multiple computers at home or you've got a smaller office, is something called a NAS, a network attached uh, storage device, 
they are a bit more expensive to set up. I think they, they're between five and eight or so, depending on how much storage you're putting on there. But that is like a little server, but it's meant for file storage. Uh, so, you know, you, you can do lots of things. You can stream with them. You can do lots of things with them, but you can use it as a backup device. So that, that is separate from your computer. Okay. So you don't have, it doesn't help you backing up your computer on that computer, on your own computer. It doesn't help. It's not safe. So you got to get it somewhere there. So if you want to back up all the devices in your home or in your business to the same place, you can do that via a NAS. And then, as I said, very importantly, you've got to encrypt uh, the data. That is very, very uh, important. All right. So I want to announce quickly the uh, the guest for tomorrow. So tomorrow uh, on the show, I'll have uh, Rulof Horn. Rulof is the director and portfolio head of head portfolio manager at uh, Mitten Optimal for the South African. I think his responsibility is for the uh, South African based uh, multi asset funds. So I'm going to have him on tomorrow, and we're going to talk about you know opportunities and risks. But there's a whole host of things that I want to ask him. And I know that you've maybe attended a lot of these portfolio manager discussions and what do we think is going to happen to the economy and what are we going to do about this and this and this. Um, I'm going to try and do this a little bit differently. So we are going to touch on things like portfolio constructions, where the risks and opportunities are, you know, how we should go about it, etc. Uh, but I want to sort of make this interesting and, and ask maybe questions that, that people are not necessarily asking. I don't know, maybe I will. But um, yeah, join us tomorrow. So he'll be on live uh, at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, which is, what is that, Wednesday 29th. And then also tomorrow, uh, we are going to do another live session in terms of the relief measures. Uh, and I'm going to, going to be, again, myself, Ida Sonicus, um, Sunet uh, Brits from Legal Sense, and then Vainan de Toy will join us. And he's going to be talking about all the relief measures that are available from the, well, not necessarily all of them, but we're going to talk about the relief measures from insurance companies and from medical aids, etc. So I'm going to have him on as well. Uh, but we will again have Q&A, so you're welcome to invite your business clients to attend yourself as well. Uh, I'll send out the details later today, and then please invite people to, to come and listen. Uh, that is different from, that is not on virtual coffee with Francois. That is something different that we're doing under the accounting practice and that, but um, you're welcome to come and join us for that. Tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., uh, you're more than welcome to, to do that. Uh, Tina says, Danke, Sinmore. Danke, Tina. Um, let me just see quickly if there is any. I just want to make sure. Let's see if I've got any. Um, yeah, Iku says, he said he's amazing. Absolutely. I fully agree. Good morning, Rob Jones. If you don't have a 100% automated backup solution, says Johan Foster, that's also proven to be able to restore from when you need it. That's important. I didn't even touch on the process of restoring. Thank you, Johan. You might uh, as well not do it at all because that's the thing. It doesn't help that it goes there, but you can't. How do you get it back? Because that's the, the second part of the process. What happens if you do need to get it back up and you need, do need to restore your machines or you need to go put, they were stolen, now you need to buy new ones. What is the process to get them onto the new one? So all of those things are extremely important. Um, and then Vimle says, don't forget to back up your WhatsApp chat, especially uh, if communicating with clients. Yes, that is very, very important. And also, I mean, some of these things can back up your phones as well. Um, and there's also like often there's these options on your phone to be able to, to automatically back up your photos and your videos and things. And then we go like, yeah, this data is too expensive. But you can set those things to only back up when you are connected to a Wi-Fi. So those are things that you can do to automate that because you forget to upload the things to your cloud stories and things like that. So saving things like videos and, and images and, and just your general personal stuff, you can put those on cloud stories if you want to. Uh, but remember these days with photos, you take photos, there's a lot of information uh, in those photos uh, that uh, can identify you, etc. So you do want to stay away from, uh, you maybe want to encrypt those as well. So, but that's up to you uh, depending on on you know, the kind of pictures you have, et cetera, and the, where you take those pictures and, and so forth. 100%, ladies and gents, that is my story this morning. Thank you very much. Neil says, thank you. Linda says, yes, uh, to Vimlesh, yes, very important, absolutely. I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much for, for joining me and for being here and celebrating this 40 in 40 days. I really appreciate it. Kobe Slang, you made it 40 out of 40. Thank you very much. And to everybody else that, that joins me every day, Really, really thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you. I wish you well, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. 
Have a good day and be safe and say hi to the family for me. Cheers.